Thank you again for the opportunity to come to you with the Word of God. I want to go back and look at something that we've looked at before, but in a little different way and go a little further with it. And that is about the treasure. Count your treasure. Count your blessings. Count your treasure. The story is told of a little girl who was visiting with her grandmother. And she had been there two or three days when an object caught her eye. And the object was a vase on the mantelpiece. She had been told by her grandmother a number of times and been allowed to look at it up close, but had been told, don't ever take it down by yourself. Don't ever do that. And she expressed to her how important it was because it was her grandmother's vase. But the little girl climbed up there, as children will, and she took the vase and she began to look at it and then she dropped it, and it just shattered at her feet, and she began to cry. And her grandmother came in the room, hearing the breakage and hearing her crying, and saw what she had done. And she said to her, "Hun, hun, I, I told you." And then she stopped, and then she took the little girl in her arms, and the little girl was sobbing, and she said. I know you told me not to. I know that it was a great treasure. And I've messed it up, grandmother. And her grandmother took her in her arms and said to her, I love you more than anything. You're by far a greater treasure than this vase could ever be. You are my treasure. That's the way God is with us. Yes, we fail sometimes. Yes, we do things that are displeasing to him. But what I want to say to you is we need to say, listen, I repent, Lord, I'm sorry. I, you told me different. But listen to what God has to say. God's saying to us, you are my treasure. You are my special treasure. And we come across that word in Exodus to begin with. When it's used there for the first time in the Old Testament and a number of more of other times, around nine times. And then it is picked up on in the New Testament. The word is segula, a strange sounding word. But listen, in Exodus 5, or 19, verse 5, listen to what is said here. God, after he has brought his children out of bondage, given them freedom, set them free, brought them to Mount Sinai, given them words to live by as he gives them the covenant. He tells them, he said, now it, then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be, you will be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. All of the earth is mine, God said, all peoples, and he loves them. But yet he entered into a special covenant with Israel, and he said, you are my special treasure, treasure, my special possession honored above all of the rest at this moment in time. And that's the way we are once we come to Christ and are willing to enter into covenant with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, placing our faith in him. Then we go into the New Testament and we find the word used so many times there. And it's used for temple storehouses and the treasure that is in them. And the Bible teaches us that we are the temple. The temple itself is not the storehouse, but it's what the temple contains. But yet that can't be separated from us as we have been bought with the blood of Christ. And Jesus taught about vanishing treasure. He spoke about this. He spoke about earthly treasure. Listen to what he said in Hebrews, if you will. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. Very familiar verses. But here we come again to this idea of earthly treasure and special treasure. In Hebrews 11, verse 25 and 26, it says, Moses, talking about Moses, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin and considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than all the treasures of Egypt. Now, that's quite a statement because Egypt was by far, by far, no one came close to touching their wealth and their riches. They were an extremely rich, rich nation. 
But Moses said, I'd rather have Christ. I'd rather have Jesus. And he talked about earthly treasures. When we place our treasure there, that it is not going to last, that it is a vanishing treasure. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, 20, and 21, Jesus said, God himself said in flesh, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, special possessions that you think are of value, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is where all real, lasting, eternal treasure is to be found. Colossians chapter 1, or chapter 2, I'm sorry. Colossians chapter 2, the second part of verse 2. A true knowledge of God's mystery, talking about the full assurance of understanding this mystery this true knowledge of God's mystery that is in God himself, that is Christ himself, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. They're found in him. They're found in him. When we come to Christ, he lives inside of us. And because he lives inside of us, we are of great wealth. We've been given great value, great worth. Listen again to a verse there in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. Verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are not the treasure, just this earthly vessel itself. We contain the treasure. We contain the tre treasure in our spirit, in our soul. And that is the treasure, all of the treasure that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's God living in us. That's all of the certainties of God's promises inside of us and that includes being able to live with peace and joy right now and having the promise of heaven to look forward to death is nothing more than just a door to all of the promises of God and the fullness of Christ and we'll live for all of eternity those who by God's grace has allowed us to place our faith in him And so all of eternity, we'll be experiencing this great treasure, exploring it, counting it over and over. What I want to say today is guard the treasure, guard the treasure. The treasure is the Holy Spirit who has come and brought Christ himself, God himself, who is God himself, the Holy Spirit is, to live inside of us. What a treasure. So don't think you're poor today, not if you know Jesus. You just haven't discovered your riches or beginning to. And none of us have even begun to exhaust that, and we cannot. We'll be doing that for all of eternity, counting our riches in Christ, and we are part of his riches. So do not grieve the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit. Guard it by obedience to God. Guard the treasure. Guard the spirit. Anna Waring said this. She said, My hope I cannot measure. My path to life is free. My Savior is my treasure. And he walks with me. What a great, great truth. So be encouraged today. Remind yourself of who you are if you belong to Jesus and what you're worth to him. Yes, we break things. We shatter things in our lives. And we're sorry for that. But God forgives he forgives, and then he takes us in, our, in his arms and he tells us, you're worth everything to me. You're my greatest treasure for my son bought you with his life.
And so be encouraged today. Let's pray. God, thank you that it's not just empty talk, Lord. You fill us with this treasure, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, a personal knowledge and relationship of him, with him. Now, God, I pray that it would encourage us just to, that we we just walk away in, in mystery, Lord, just overwhelmed by what you're telling us and what you have given us. And we come today, Lord, and ask that our lives might reflect that. And we come in your name. Amen. Have a great day today. Be encouraged.